Previously on Stick Science, Mr. Stick found a map to a pot of gold, but Miss Stick got wind of it and ran out the door with a shovel. Mr. Stick's only chance to find the treasure first is to learn how to add vectors. Now Mr. Stick already knows how to draw vector sums on paper, but he'll need exact directions if he's going to find that pot of gold. And in order to do so, first he'll need to learn what vector components are. Let's say we have a happy little vector minding its own business. Let's call that vector vector P for perfect. While vector P might indeed be perfect, it probably didn't become perfect all by itself. In fact, vector P can very well be the vector sum of two other vectors, which we'll call vectors Px and Py. There can be an infinite amount of vector combinations that give rise to the perfect resultant vector P. But let's find a combination where vectors Px and Py are vectors along the x and y axis of a Cartesian coordinate system, where the tails of vectors P, Px, and Py all begin on the origin of the coordinate system. In such a scenario, vectors px and py are called the component vectors of vector p. Now because vectors px and py are each on the x and y axis of the coordinate system respectively, we know what their directions are. So as a consequence, we can express these vectors with a single number. For vector px, let's define a number which has the same value as the magnitude of vector px and call it number px. In case vector px points towards the negative direction, we'll define the number px to be the negative of the magnitude of vector px, keeping in mind that the magnitude of a vector is always positive. The same goes for vector py, and we can describe it with the number py. These two numbers, px and py, are called the components of vector p. You can find components for any vector in this manner, and use it to accurately describe that vector by writing its components horizontally or vertically, either in parentheses or in brackets. These two numbers will tell everyone and anyone the direction and magnitude of each vector. How, you might ask? Well, it's because these two numbers are actually the lengths of two legs of a right triangle, and when we have right triangles, we have trigonometry, as well as the Pythagorean theorem. Want to know the direction of vector p? Easy. Since the angle theta measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis can be calculated using the relationship tangent theta is equal to py over px, just punch in arctangent py over px on your scientific calculator, and it will spew out the exact angle of the vector. For example, if px is equal to 2 and py is equal to negative 2, and so you punch in arctangent negative 1 to find the direction, your calculator will give you negative 45 degrees, which is equal to 315 degrees. This will put the vector in the fourth quadrant, and it will be the correct answer. But be careful, because 135 degrees is also a correct answer for arctangent negative 1. For example, if px is equal to negative 2 and py is equal to 2, then the vector is in the second quadrant and 135 degrees is the correct answer, not 315. So in order to avoid confusion, it's usually a good idea to draw your vectors on a piece of paper so you can figure out which of the two is the answer you want. Next, you might wonder about the magnitude. Also easy. Since px and py are the legs of a right triangle, the hypotenuse can be calculated using the Pythagorean theorem which tells you that the square sum of the legs are equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So the magnitude of vector p is the square root of px squared plus py squared. Also, if you know the direction and magnitude of a vector, you can find out what its components are using the relationship cosine theta is equal to px over p and sine theta is equal to py over p. Rewrite and you get px is equal to p cosine theta and py is equal to p sine theta. Now we have everything to actually add vectors with precision. Let's say we have two vectors p and q, represented by their respective components px py and qx qi, and we want to calculate their sum vector r. Because the vector sum of vectors p and q can be expressed by placing the tail of vector q on the head of vector p, the resultant sum vector r must consist of components that are the result of adding the individual component of vectors p and q. In other words, the components of vector r, rx, and ry must be equal to px plus qx and py plus qy respectively. This relationship is true no matter how many dimensions you have and no matter how many vectors you're adding. Now that we have everything we need, let's go find that treasure. To recap, the instructions to the treasure are Start from the house, go 1 km northeast and 2 km east. So the first instruction vector A has a magnitude of 1 km and a direction of 45 degrees counting counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. And the second instruction vector B has a magnitude of 2 km and a direction of 0 degrees. Since ax is equal to a cosine theta and ay is equal to a sine theta, the components of vector a are 0.71 kilometers and 0.71 kilometers. Using the same method, the components of vector b are 2 kilometers and 0 kilometers. 
Add these components and the resultant sum vector C will have the components 2.71 km and 0.71 km. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can calculate the magnitude of vector C to be 2.8 km. And while arctangent 0.71 over 2.71 can either be 14.7 degrees or 194.7 degrees, we know vector C to be in the first quadrant. So the direction of vector C is 14.7 degrees north of east. And voila, Mr. Stick has his precise shortcut. Go 2.8 kilometers, 14.7 degrees north of east. So Mr. Stick busted out his compass and measured his way happily to the treasure. Unfortunately, it took Mr. Stick forever to learn how to add vectors. So even with the shortcut, by the time he got there, Miss Stick had already claimed the treasure for herself. She then bought a big ass diamond, which apparently is now her best friend. But that's okay, because Mr. Stick got something even better. Knowledge. Yeah. Stick science.